All right, this is going to be another breakdown with the um, uh, IGA Champions League. These have been uh, really great to watch. Uh, I've learned a lot so far. I have not watched all of them. I'm doing the breakdowns as I'm watching them. Um, so uh, I do know Joseph Chen here. Uh, I've trained with him a couple times at Open Mat. I've rolled with him, and uh, he's actually uh, very good, obviously, very good. Um, I don't love, this will be my second time seeing him, uh, compete. And this is, uh, I, I did a breakdown with him earlier. Um, but you know, the universal fighters, I've been kind of watching their strategy so far. Uh, they're very, uh, top heavy, uh, pressure wrestling. Uh, so it's really interesting to see, um, that, that uh, just that simple strategy, be, strategy, uh, doing so well, uh, rightly so. So. Uh, let's get started on this breakdown. Uh, don't forget to click the link in the description uh, to join the Sweet Science of Fighting Underground where you can get uh, access to all the strength and training programs. Um, and you can also submit your own uh, videos for breakdown. And uh, on that, we'll start. Let's see. All right. So, again, I think the rule set is here there has to be contact before any kind of guard is pulled. Uh, I don't suspect we'll see Chen wrestle a lot. I was just about to say wrestle a lot as he pulls guard. So he made contact. Okay, let's see if he plays this open half kind of position here, as just like all the other teams have so far. Uh, so he opts to go to butterfly guard. So he's got his butterfly in here. I've been seeing this technique used a lot, kind of the uh, kind of punch to the throat here. Uh, this is pretty useful in getting the person's back on the mat. Um, uh, what Adelog doesn't want here is obviously, as he's seeing here, get, getting elevated, but certainly he doesn't want this uh, classic butterfly connection with uh, Chen getting chest to chest connection. If he was actually to get chest to chest connection, um, this would be a major problem um, if you're trying to uh, do a butterfly sweep. So he's had his back on the mat. So you can see how this kind of causes a problem with his hands extended here, um, you know, keeping uh, uh, Chen flat on his back here. And um, but he's, he can't really make too much progress yet until he gets rid of these uh, butterfly hooks. So Chin can elevate all he wants there, but he can't really go left or right yet uh, because his back is flat. So just a quick reset. That was just a counter. To, they countered each other there. Okay, so one thing I want to notice uh, to point out to is as I've been watching more of these, the guard players, uh, you see a lot of the seated position here, but there's a big dif difference here with seated position with your head leaning forward versus your head uh, kind of being postured up. If his head was postured up here, he would simply be pushed back. But because he's uh, squeezed in here and he has his head uh, pointed towards his uh, opponent's chest, this makes it a little more difficult for him just to be pushed back. It also gives him access, closer access to the uh, uh, triceps and arms here to start um, effectively uh, establishing connection. Uh, with the upper body. Uh, the hooks can come in later once the uh, connection of the top or of the, of the upper body is made. So you see there he got he had two on one and then he had that connection and then he slid the hooks in. So he's doing the same thing again, he's trying to pummel. Can play this half butterfly type position. So getting a lace here. I don't know I was doing a lace on the leg. I'm trying to, you know, it's very important uh, when you play these type of guards, uh, Chen keeps his knee open here, okay? Like this is good placement for his knee. The, the moment that his knee gets a little too squeezed in here or it gets a, obviously a little too uh, opened up out here, he'll start to lose inside position or he'll start to get his knee pinched together and this is not such a great position in this particular case. It's a good open guard. Uh, Adelov's doing a good job here controlling the legs, which he should be doing. You see a lot more focus now, uh, especially in advanced uh, uh, grappling, you'll see a lot of uh, control of the feet. Um, this isn't any kind of new strategy, new strategy. You're just kind of seeing it uh, utilized a lot more now. It's a very simple technique and a very simple uh, thing that is, you know, taught, uh, you know, your first few months, but this is uh, there was a bit of an arm drag there almost. You notice he's he's really posting on uh, Chen's feet here. He's posting on him and then he's moving his body around, uh, and this causes a problem because if he gets around his feet, obviously he can start to uh, make connection with the upper body, um, and this would be a problem. 
So maybe I was going to say it could get to full guard, but not really. So I got this half butterfly. It's going to keep this forward pressure in. Notice the, you know, Edelov's hips here were like really forward and down there when he's going into the butterfly. He was like really hipping in. Okay, he's trying to step over the knee. Edelov's trying to step over this knee here, trying to turn the corner, as we say. Keeping pressure on that top leg, top knee, always keeping pressure on that top knee. Remember, uh, this is going to sound like a broken record, but the top knee and the top arm is what Adelov is trying to beat here. If he can beat those, one of those, uh, one or both, he can start to make progress. And I suspect these guys aren't too concerned. Um, you know, this team here, Chen team is, they're not too concerned about, you know, the red team falling back for leg locks, at least not, not what I've seen so far. Um, I'm sure they're aware of leg locks. They know them. Um, but you know, it's on a, it's on a different level. When we're talking about, um, you know, these guys that just do leg locks all the time. Um, seems like their focus, again, is just more wrestling and pressure passing. So the reason why I was mentioning that is because you, that could have been a leg lock entry there, just some extension with the legs. Um, just an option. So good frames here. Chin's got some good frames. Um, Adelov is doing a good job trying to pressure this leg down so he can do a step over. He almost went to a knee ride there. And they're going to play here. I mean, this is a this is a, a chess match. Any, you know, one slight mistake will either produce a sweep or produce a pass. So he's diving over. He's trying to dive over that leg, or dive over with the hook. It's not going to happen. He's probably using it just to get some movement. There, you can see he's really got this knee popped up going into like a knee ride position. Um, you know, Chen's top leg here, it's th threaded over here on top. So he can't actually get that, that knee right pass. And if somehow this knee was to pass and, um, uh, Chen's knee was here in front, then, you know, Chen can just start to invert here. And, uh, you know, this would start to produce leg locks. Good frame. Okay, just notice this downward pressure here. All the pressure, that shoulder is really pressuring in here. His head using it as a battering ram. His left arm is always managing this bottom leg. Just constant pressure. Tried to establish top connection there with his left arm. Pushing him back flat. Playing butterfly. I don't see him passing this guard uh, with this type of, you know, with this sticking with this strategy and this type of pace, this is just made to kind of wear the person down. It looked like there was an angle there almost produced uh, by Chen on the bottom. And again, you see Chen forcing his left arm to the inside. He forces that left arm to the inside because it's the top arm. If he wedges it in there, then this this gives this allows him to create space and allows him to do his inversions and everything else that he wants to do. And right there, you see this, you see they've got this, ar uh, this arm drag on the far arm here. This is a, a setup we've been seeing a lot. This is being used a lot for sweeps um, and to destabilizing your, your opponents to even enter into leg locks um, and other positions. This far arm drag is good. Uh, I utilize this a lot as well. It's just a really good form of connection and it really closes off this side of the, you know, that side of the body. There's hand fighting, constant hand fighting here. You know, this, this overextension, um, you know, I'm always weary here. I'm, I'm always, you know, weary when somebody really extends that left arm like that. He's okay here because obviously he's very aware of the position. But um, if his, you know, if, if Chen's legs were free here, this would obviously um, be a problem. So you got a two on one. He's going back to that. So notice here, you see how he went to this pass again, this half pass. Again, his arm is always pushing down on that bottom uh, bottom leg. So his left arm pushing down on the bottom leg here. And again, Chen's trying to wedge this arm in between uh, both their heads. Uh, because if he doesn't, he's going to get passed. Okay, because this means that he just, uh, you know, Adelaide will just close off the, the uh, outside position here. And he can start to pass. But you can see the arm gets wedged in there. And now he, you can see Chin was thinking about switching to an underhook there, um, like a straight arm lock. 
or a, a, a Troy Bar type position. The Troy Bar has been played a lot from these open half guard positions and even open butterfly positions. Good. So you can see he's got control of the foot here. See the bottom leg here, just trying to keep in connection. Bottom arm, uh, Chen's bottom arm here, connecting to the hip as well. Again, you see that his uh, Adelov's left arm never leaves that bottom leg. It's just constantly pressuring it down. This is what gets exhausting, uh, you know, carrying the weight and then having to manage that bottom leg. Because, you know, Chen really wants that bottom leg retracted, right? He, needs to, he, he would prefer it to be retracted, the knee retracted, and there's just there's no way to, uh, to actually get the pass. Uh, but because, um, you know, Adelov's doing such a good job here of, of really push, constantly pushing that knee down, um, this can get very tiring very quickly. Uh, but he has the top uh, leg here controlled, so he can't just swing this leg around. Uh, what Chen would really like to do here is kind of go inverted and take this leg and throw it over, right, over here and just start to go inverted. Uh, either go to a reset or actually go to attacks uh, on the upper body. Right now, uh, Adelov's legs are too far away. So he, but he'd, he would, uh, he could actually get some attacks on the upper body. Uh, I like the pos head position here of uh, Adelov. He has his head position right there in the uh, chest sternum area. And this could produce a pass, but there's just too much space being generated and then recovery. That was good. There was almost an underhook. So the reason why that was a bit of a scramble is because uh, Chen almost had an underhook on the far leg which could have uh, allowed him to invert and uh, cross over to the top leg, um, to the to uh, Adelov's leg here, and start to go to a leg attack, or at least set him in a, a leg entanglement. Um, but in doing so, you can see, like, now he's destabilized. I say I always say, once the person's butt hits the mat, now uh, Chin has an opportunity to attack and produce something. Could have wrestled. He tried to, he went to kind of a wrestle-up position here, and this is pretty uh, standard now. I mean, Technically, when uh, Adelaide's butt hit the ground, um, you have several options, uh, but the most common reactions now is to wrestle forward and go forward until you can get on top uh, or go into a leg entanglement, right? Because the legs start to become light uh, and they're closest to you. So those are the two most common reactions that I've seen uh, that uh, people will do once they get kind of that, that basic reaction or sweep to where the per person's butt hits the floor. The red team overall, uh, and Adelov here as well, is just very good at just constantly staying on top. Um, they they tend to win every single one of these scrambles, almost almost all of them. Not, I've seen them lose a couple of them. Um, I've only seen a couple of them on their back, right? Only for a few seconds. Um, um, but um, just something to take notice. Now Chin's stuck in playing guard again, but that's okay. But now it's a little different. He has a he has a, a hook around this. Uh, this uh, Adelov's leg right here, uh, on the he has a hook on the inside. It looks like his left arm is behind the knee and wedged through. Now this can produce a bunch of different positions. Uh, the most uh, common position currently is a lot of people will try to throw uh, their leg over and go into a false reap position. Um, uh, Chen could do this if he can get his left leg crossed over, and then this will be a problem. But we'll see if uh, that can actually happen. So he's not going to be able to do this to, uh, simply because he's uh, stepped over here. Uh, you know, this left leg right here would need to be crossed over to the hip with uh, uh, Adelov's leg in the center, his right leg here. Um, but this actually can still produce a leg lock. Maybe he could take the right foot out here and go to a Debbie double outside Ashi position, or he could elevate and go into a honey hole position on the far leg here if he can get elevation. So he is crossing this leg over and trying to get into maybe an Ashigurami position. Um, the reason why this is happening, and I didn't even, uh, really consider that is because if you, the, if Adelov's, the red team seems to have a really good base, right? And I'm actually pretty surprised that he's a allowed the position to get this far on the outside. This knee was, was here before and pretty heavy, right? Uh, but, uh, Chin did a really good job of destabilizing the position enough to start to get his outside leg up on the hip. Once that get, leg gets up on the hip and he starts to turn to his right a little bit, now the, the leg here become uh, a little lighter and he can start to create an angle. Uh, what needs to, The reason why this happened now is because uh, Adelov's, the, the right knee here was on the ground and is no longer on the ground. So um, now that this is happening, um, he needs to be careful now because there will be certainly get in, become an uh, Ashigurami uh, position, uh, leg entanglement. And could quickly go to some kind of uh, ankle lock or 
outside heel hook or something like that. So here we go right here. So now you can see this, um, this ashigrami position. He decided to stand up, and this is pretty st uh, standard of what I've been seeing with these guys. Uh, uh, the the red team is they, they'll stand up and they'll scramble out and they'll turn and they'll run, go to a running escape or to clear the knee, and they're very good at it. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if he can peel this foot off, start to free his leg. The issue here is going to be um, Chen's uh, grip on the leg. The grip on the leg here is what's critical. It, if he holds this ankle lock grip, uh, you know, it doesn't matter how how explosive Adelop's here. He's not going to be able to do a running escape. He can't run away. It's actually not encouraged to do that because he's extending his body away. And, um, you know, Chen can just hold on to this ankle lock grip and roll through and start to reattach his legs in different uh, com uh, combinations. So... Um, this can be a problem. His best option here is to keep that leg heavy, start to keep get the, get the stack, and start to free this outside leg here, start to push that outside leg off. I haven't seen him touch that outside leg yet. And I, I, again, I, I would, I, I'm really surprised he has not pushed this leg off here yet. He's really focused on the inside leg, trying to step, maybe push it through or step over. And Chen is uh, switched now. It looks like he's switched to a butterfly. Uh, it's like a butterfly uh, ashi position. Butterfly ashi positions are very, uh, very strong, and you're seeing it used a lot more uh, now, especially with the ankle lock grips, because you can start to get extension uh, with the ankle lock grip. In other words, this butterfly hook can start to push away and, and creating a, a um, an extended leg, and so this adds pressure to the actual ankle lock. So it looks like, I think that's his heel. This is going to be a problem now because this is no longer a straight ankle lock. This is going to be an Aoki. An Aoki is like a, it's basically just a heel hook. Um, but a heel hook that is extremely difficult and, ex and it happens extremely fast um, uh, to get out of if he can maintain this butterfly grip here and if he can close off this position. Uh, it looks like uh, uh, Adelov doesn't understand this position doesn't understand this position uh, as, as well as <laughs> maybe uh, he should, uh, but it I can see his strategy here fighting the hands, uh, and this is great. You should be fighting the hands, but now that it's gone into an Aoki position, he really needs to keep the legs open. If he can fo fo focus on keeping the legs open, then he can actually um, move around and, and un kind of unwind himself from this Aoki. If uh, Chen is uh, able to cross this outside leg over in any kind of fashion, in any fashion, and close off this position, uh, the Aoki will, will he'll finish the Aoki. So you can see now there's an Aoki. So turning away, this is not what he wants to do. Um, I would be surprised if he doesn't tap here, or you know he's going to get his leg broken. Uh, get like a belly down Aoki position. Oh, okay, yeah. So that was a quick, quick tap. Um, I think that was a tap. Let's see. Oh yeah. So. Uh, very good, uh, uh, very good entry and very good, uh, finish. The Aoki, uh, the Aoki leg lock is something we haven't, uh, hadn't seen for, for many years until, you know, the past few years, you started seeing it a lot more. It's not a new move. Uh, it's been around for a little while, uh, but, uh, you hadn't seen it for a while. And then all of a sudden it kind of made a reappearance as people really started using it. And I think it was because people were starting to use ankle locks again and starting to use the ankle lock grip to wrestle with and to hold on to and start to really understand that the ankle lock uh, itself is actually a control position and a, and a form of uh, a good connection uh, to your partner. You can also produce leg locks uh, all over the place with them, right? Um, Aoki and ankle lock go hand in hand. Uh, if you have an ankle lock, you have an Aoki. Um, you just have to, you know, punch up, do an uppercut, basically punch up and do an uppercut with an ankle lock grip kind of sink your chest back and then put that heel on your chest. Once the opponent's heel is on your chest and you lock it all up with the butterfly grip, um, this is very hard to get out of if you, if you get the position closed off. So it ends up becoming a rotational submission instead of a straight ankle uh, or a straight submission. Uh, so it um, ends up being a heel hook. So uh, very good, uh, very good uh, match. It, uh, I think... Um, Adelov just didn't really understand that particular leg position uh, as well as uh, Chen did. And, um, uh, you know, I, I, I'll say again, he, he really needed to keep those legs open. Uh, the hand fighting can help, but when it's an Aoki, it really does. It's like, it's like if you have a heel hook grip 
on somebody with a standard heel hook and somebody just starts fighting your hands, but you have the grip locked in and everything's locked in, it's risky to start doing that. Um, so I would have liked to have seen uh, Adelaide kind of open the legs here, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, these, uh, these guys are both very high level and, uh, you know, again, it just shows that one little mistake, the knee leaving the ground and this is what it kind of led into. So, um, very good match and I'll be doing, uh, more with this, uh, with this team matchup. All right. Thanks.